Hello, boys and girls. This, this is our second Delphi program. In our first program, we had input two numbers. Sorry, in the first program, we had input the name and surname, and we output name and surname. So we are inputting text or string values. This time, we're going to input integer values. So we're going to input two numbers, find the sum and average. So we're going to work with numbers, integers. So your program, your first, your second Delphi program, you go to file to remind you new BCL application. We can increase our form size. You need to save this. This can be saved as, go to save all and save it as a unit as well as a project. So we're going to find the folder in which we're going to save and we're going to save it. Okay, I have, have it on desktop for now. Grade 10 IT Delphi, that's our program one. So I'm going to make a new folder for program two. I can call it program sum average. Note each new word starts with a capital letter, makes it easier to read, program sum average. So if I open, double click to open, I'm going to save my program here. So to save the unit, we'll call it sum average underscore u, the unit. And then we're going to save the project sum average underscore p. Our well, form can be given a name. It is called form two. You can give it a name. So if you go to caption, you can write here, calculates sum and average. That's your form name. Sorry, that's not your form name, that's your caption, that's the display. You can give your form a name, it's called form two. So if you want to give your form a name, FRM is the name of your, uh, your prefix with the FRM and sum form sum average. So that's your form name and that's your caption for display purposes. You can put in a label and the label will stay the same. We can give a display, so our caption What is this form doing? It calculates the sum and average of two numbers. We can put in a label to input the first number. Now you'll note that if you want to put in all your labels at the same time, to save time and you want to put in uh, a caption. Caption is for what you want to display. It's easier to put, put them and go to caption because the caption in the object inspector will be visible to each one. So if we choose an option in the object inspector, then it will be for each one. For labels, we need to put in a caption and a name. The names are the ones that appear on this side. The caption is what is visible. So to make it easier, you, you do all your captions first, then you don't have, do not have to scroll and look for caption and their name. So we go to captions first, and this caption we want to enter your first number. So we'll say enter first number. These are all the easier ways to do this. You can do the, the caption and the name for each one. You can do all the captions, which is what I prefer doing. It saves me time. And then you can work with your names. So once I've done that, I can go to calculate sum and I can go and 
give it a name for the label. So name will be LBL heading. This is the heading. This is your first number. So the label LBL, your num one, your first number. And this is your LBL. I decided to call them num one and num two. The choice is yours. But you need something, you need to say that it's the first number and the second number. Now to make this, uh, to increase the font size, you can click on each one and you can go to font, go to font and change the size here. Or you can change it here on the side. So if you change the font size here to 14, for example, it increases to 14. Now, if you've got many labels there and you want them to be of a standard size, you can click on the form itself and you can go to font and you can change the, the size to, say for example, 12. It will change all. Even if you're changing the color of, of the entire, all the font, you can do so. You can change the color. You can also make it bold. So if you click on the form itself, you can, you can change the information on the form. We can change, if you want bold, we have the style, the under style, we have bold. So by clicking on the form, all of this can be changed or you can go individually to each one and change. Those are your options. We also need to input two numbers. So we're going to use a T edit. Now remember, we change the font size uh, of the entire form. So you, it will affect your T edits as well. So the size will affect all components that you add to your form. So your option would have been to do each one individually. So your first T edit was going to read in your first number. So I'm going to give it a name. You look at the left-hand side here. We got, it's called edit one and edit two. So I'm going to call this EDT num one. And I'll call this, you notice we're still under name because we're changing the names. There's no need to scroll. So when you change the same, Property for each component, your cursor is still at the property. Makes it faster to change. Num two. We need to also clear the t uh, the text boxes. So we are clearing the the edit boxes. So we go to text. We remove. We delete that. So it's clear. Go to text here and you can delete that. You can highlight it and delete it. Now, if something, if, if, if it doesn't work, you have a problem, you just need to click out and come back into a, into a property. Now, we need a button that will actually do the calculations. So I'm going to put in a button and the caption will say calculate. You can say calculate sum, calculate average simply going to say calculate, increasing the size of my button. Here again, the button is called button one. So if I go to name, I'll call it BTN, calculate. That is going to calculate for me. We need a display, so I'm going to use a memo, a T memo. So there's a team memo. This should give me the answer that I want. I need to give the memo a name as well. There's no caption in memo. Your name for your uh, team memo can be mem display. Okay, just fine. Mem display is fine. And then we come down here and we need to clear it. To clear your mem display, you go to lines. And we clear, delete, that's a main display. So we are now ready to write the code 
to calculate your um, the sum of two numbers. So if you're under cal button calculate, we need two memory locations so, or, or two variables, one for your first number, call it N1, and the second number N2, or num1 and num2. We also need one to work out sum. Now to indicate that they are integers or to remind us of the integers, we put a little I in the front and an I in the front here to remind us that these variables are integers. Variables, as in pseudocode, we spoke about memory locations. They are going to store in the values we're working with. Now to read in an integer value, we need to convert from a text to integer. Remember in EDT num1, you, when you get the information is of type text, that's a string. But we need to store it in a memory location as of type integer or a variable as of type integer. So we need to type in string, that means some string to int. We need to convert this to int as to an integer. Now, similarly, we can use a copy and paste here or we can type it out. We need one for the second number and we're reading it from your second EDT component. Now we have two integer values, we need to find the sum. The sum will be your N1 plus your N2. If you use control space bar, it gives you control, hold the control key down and press space bar and you can choose your numbers or you can simply type it in as your two numbers. Now to output your sum in your mem display, control space bar is giving me my component name, dot lines. I'm gonna add in a line, dot add. So what am I adding in? I'm adding a line that's going to say the message is the sum is, I'm going to do that. I'm going to give the message with a little space after the is. And now I need to start, uh, display my I sum. Now if I put in I sum on its own, there's it, I'm going to display I sum. Save and run. It's giving me an error. And the error is, errors can be seen at the bottom here. It says right at the bottom, you're watching at the bottom of my screen, the error here, it says incompatible type string and integer. And the reason for that is this is a string. We're going to display only outputs only strings, and this is an integer. So in order for you to output an integer, we have to convert the int the integer to a string, str. We put in a pair of brackets to say that this is what we're converting to, a, a string. Integer to a string, save, I'm going to run. So if you first, your first number is 12, your second number is five, you'll give me 17. The sum is 17, that is working. So you can always go and change uh, your values. Sum is 35, close. If we're working out the average, average is of type real. So I need to put in R for real, AVG for short, for average. You can write the whole word or the complete word average, that's R average. Now, how do you calculate average? You can calculate it after your display or before the display of sum. Your R average is equal to the sum, control space bar gives me, this I do have to do less typing, sum divided by two, because the average of two numbers, you divide by two. Now you need to display this. So I'm going to copy this. Control C is a shortcut to copy. Control V is a shortcut to paste. I'm cutting and pasting or copying and pasting. So it's easier for me to work with. You can type it out as well. Average, the average is. Now in terms of your average, it's R A B G. that's your average. If I try running this, it's going to give me an error. Right, it's incompatible types again. You see, into string, 
Okay, it says overloaded version. We leave this for now, but, but it cannot convert our average to a string because it's not an integer. The word we use here is float. Float means the real number. So real to string, but we're using float to string. If I run it at this point, two numbers, 15 and 20. 35 and the average is 17.5. So even if we have whole numbers, the sum here is 30, 20 and 10 is 30, and the average is 30 divided by 2, 15. So that is your program to input two numbers, calculate sum, average, and to display. So note, when you input a text, you have to convert to an integer. When you output, you take your integer and convert to uh, a text. You have to convert an int to string, or if it's a real number, from float to string. Okay, you can try out these programs.